If Curry and Westbrook switch careers, is Stephen Curry still a game changer? Will a Westbrook and Clay backcourt work out as well as the Splash Brothers? Can Curry, Harden, and KD bring the Thunder their first ring as a franchise? Does Russell Westbrook finally win the big one? Does the big three of LeBron, Curry, and AD work out? With the saying in 2020 be look at Westbrook, man? Those are all questions that will be answered in today's video. Starting off in 2008, Stephen Curry is drafted fourth overall to the Seattle Supersonics. He'll be joining the squad with 76 overall fellow rookie Sir. Serge Ibaka, 88 overall second year Kevin Durant, a 76 overall Jeff Green, and Milwaukee Bucks former head coach Adrian Griffin, just a random appearance from him. By the all-star break, you can already tell Curry was ready to be a pro, averaging 24.7 assists and 1.6 steals per game, shooting 46% from the field, 41% from three. The man was nothing to play with. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best in the league, he dropped 27 on Iverson, outscoring everybody on the Nuggets team, including Carmelo, who had 26. 20 27 against the big three in Boston, which is not easy when you got Kevin Garnett yelling at everybody on the court the whole game. And him and KD both getting 29 against Kobe in the L, but hey, they still scored 29 against Kobe. So you can tell Steph and KD were both on their way to do big things in the future, but now was just not their time. They missed the playoffs with a 36 and 46 record, finishing 10th in the East behind the Golden State Warriors, who we'll get back to in a couple minutes. Now, although the team will have a dark end into the season, which is expected, they're a young team, nobody expects expecting him to go off, be first seed or anything like that. Curry would end up winning Rookie of the Year, averaging 25.7 assists, shooting 47% from the field and 41% from three. So Curry had an amazing rookie season, way better than Westbrook did in real life, and you can already tell he's going to be somewhat of a game changer. Now, you remember that Golden State team that I was talking about that finished in the ninth seed, one seed above the Thunder? Well, they ended up getting the seventh pick in the draft and had their sights set dead on point guard Russell Westbrook, feeling that he would be the perfect fit to go into the backcourt with Fel Hello, young guard Monte Ellis, and they weren't wrong in drafting him. Westbrook will have a great rookie season, averaging basically 20 points per game, four rebounds, six assists, one steal, shooting 44% from the field, not so great from three, only shooting 27%. He would get the dub his first All-Star weekend in the Rising Stars game with nine points and six assists, teaming up with Curry, who had 24 and 12, clearly still on the tear from his rookie season. He ended up making the All-Star team in just his second season in the league, only having five points and eight assists. Westbrook would end up losing the rookie of the year battle against Blake Griffin who has significantly worse stats than him. I don't understand. How did this man win? He would also miss out on the playoffs as the Warriors would end up finishing 14th in the West worse than before they got him. 17 and 65 record is just uh, huh. I don't even know the word for it. So as a player, he had a great first season. You could tell he gonna be leading the Warriors from now on. But as a team, they did worse than before they got him. The same could not be said about Curry and his Thunder, though, as they will finish third in the West with a 49-33 record. Curry even making the All-NBA second team in his second NBA season, averaging 28 points and eight assists. Not to mention he had the backup of a rookie James Harden, who averaged 17 points and six assists, shooting 44% from the field. And fellow All-Star KD, who also averaged 28 points per game, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, doing everything on defense that there is to do with 1.8 steals and 1.8 blocks per game. The Thunder were looking like a real contender in year 2. In the first round of the 2010 playoffs, they would match up against Starbury, Yao Ming, and the Houston Rockets. And after a very intense first four games where they would go back and forth, both teams winning two games each, Curry and KD would lead the way for the Thunder to take the series 4-2 after both players averaged 30 points the entire series. Durant even dropping a 40 point double double to close the series off in the sixth and final game meaning they move on to the next round to face a dallas team that would end up winning the championship in real life the next year 105 106 a minute 40 to go both teams not playing no games right now y'all better lock up on dirk no defense being played how is kd gonna answer right back to him the little pick and roll works to perfection turnaround doesn't work out though he missed the layup goes right back up with it misses it again gets his board misses it a third time He's a sellout. All he had to do was pass the ball. Thomas down low trying to go up. You already know he's going to force that in. They call a foul. Curry not in the game right now. I feel like he might have fouled out. He ends up making the first free throw. Is he making number two? Yes, sir. Thunder down by five with a minute left on the clock. They're going to have to do something fast. KD already knew. Tried to force up the close shot and it's off. You already know he's going to go to work. That's the best player on the squad. Oh, my gosh. Gets absolutely clamped up, though. Jason Terry wide open. Mavericks take game one, one six. 
116 to 109. Curry ended up fouling out with only 18 points in 21 minutes played. So you know that if he got to play the whole game, Thunder was definitely winning this. With that being said, Curry will once again get into foul trouble in game two, finishing with five fouls, only scoring 19 points. Very hesitant play from him. James Harden will have his breakout game. 34.6 rebounds, six assists, but he had four turnovers and 14 for 25 isn't the best efficiency when you're having a breakout game. Also, add on KD having a slump, shooting five for 17, one for eight from the three. Finishing with only 14 points. Thunder take a game two loss. Getting blown out by the Mavs, 102 to 133. Dirk finishing with a 36 point double double. He also made six threes. Game three, the Thunder are finally on it. 115 to 115. Jason Terry making layups over Serge Ibaka is crazy. Thunder got all their pieces in crunch time. Finally, Curry here, KD here. It's no excuses. If they lose this game, it's not looking good for them. They go down 3 0. Harden with the tough lefty leg. Tie ball game. How is Kid and the Mavericks going to match it? You already know they're going straight down low to Dirk. Are we sure that we want Jeff Green guarding Dirk? Yes, we are. He gets the stop. Harden on the fast break, pushing it pushing it. Ibaka on the other side. Pull up. Jay! Mavs gonna keep going back to Dirk. Fade away. Knock down. Oh my gosh. That was just perfect. Okay. Tie game. 24 seconds on the clock. Somebody gonna have to make a buzzer beater. It's looking like. Can KD in his third year knock down a game winner from three? No, he cannot. He misses in the Thunder call a timeout with 1.9. Who they passing the ball into? It's no way that they go to JK, right? Oh my gosh. Dirk. Down low. No way! Thunder end up losing 121 to 119 off a Dirk lay over KD though. Like he did that on their best player. Mavs up 3-0 on the Thunder. What is Curry gonna do? The answer to that question was fight. Curry will play the most minutes out of any Thunder player in game four, refusing to get taken out of the game. And although he was shooting terribly from three, going three for seven and eight for 18, it encouraged his teammates to step up as well. Harden going off with 27 points. Curry had 26 points and 13 assists, getting it done off terrible shooting. Sean Livingston with 18 points and 10 assists got a double-double himself. And although Curry and his Thunder were going crazy in the beginning, the Mavs will figure out a way to foul out KD and James Harden, leaving Curry in crunch time all alone, 53 seconds on the clock, 116-116. He got to go to Cephalosha as his second option. This is bad news for Curry right now. Trying to get down low to that basket. He can't get past Jason Kidd. He's just going to have to shoot over him at this point, bro. You're locked. You're locked. It's not working, no. Livingston, bro, we need you. Mid-range monster. Knocks down the three over Jason Terry. Head time. 119, 116, Mavs down by three. They looking to sweep the Warriors, though. They go right back to Dirk. Dirk with the fade that's in there every time. They got to foul immediately. No idea. Ooh, that pass was crazy. Curry definitely not the guy that you want to make go to the free throw. He going to make it every time. That's knockdown number one. And Thunder end up going. Oh, my gosh. Curry missing free throws. Yo, 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 yo. Curry missing free throws. Lockdown on Jason Terry. 10 seconds. Come on, bro. Please step up on Jason Terry. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Dirk out at the three over Nick Collison. What is he made out of? What? He, I haven't seen him miss since the simulation started, since this playoff started. Thunder looking to just toss the ball up into the hoop. Throw an alley-oop at this point. Curry launches it, doesn't get the ball off in time, and the Thunder gets swept. Now, although both players suffered tragic fates at the end of the 2009-2010 season, they did not let that hold them back following into the next season. Both Westbrook and Curry making the All-Star game, leading the West to the W over the East. But sadly, while Russ will have a great season, averaging 24 points, five rebounds, seven assists, and gaining all NBA honors. The Warriors as a whole were still missing pieces. They'd end up finishing 38 and 44, the 10th seed in the West. Meanwhile, Curry and the Thunder would end up finishing first in the East over the Mavericks with a 63 and 19 record. Curry averaging 28 points and 9.9 .9 assists per game. Bam near a double-double. This is Chef Curry now. He finished second place in the MVP race, only behind his teammate KD, but somehow LeBron ended up pulling it out. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Either way, the first round of the 2010-2011 playoffs is OKC versus Blake Griffin and the Los Angeles Clippers. Just like last year, OKC was looking to make quick work of the Clippers. They would end up beating them 4-2 in the series. Both Curry and KD averaging 30-point double-doubles throughout the series. James Harden came through averaging 18 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. The big three looks like it's in full effect, but they gonna have to prove themselves against another big three in the league. Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Tim Duncan. They got the Spurs in the 
next round. And man, oh man, will OKC use their youth. They end up sweeping the Spurs 4-0 after multiple 50-point performances from KD and excellent shooting from Curry. The young big three knocks the old big three off the board. Moving on to the conference finals, they got Kobe and the Lakers. Game one coming down to the last shot. You had to expect that one. I ain't gonna lie. Kobe was not finna go out without a fight. What is the game plan if anybody just gonna pull up and make a three? It's Curry. Derek Fisher mismatch. Hey, if you know Kobe, though, he gonna make a buzzer beater. Three seconds on the clock over James Harden. He forces it, but misses. OKC takes game one of the Western Conference Finals. After game one, Kobe went into game two looking to send a message. They will blow out OKC 116 to 103. The same end result in game three after Mamba had an amazing 44 point performance, which followed in the game four. Kobe dropping 32, Paul Gasol having 22 points and 24 rebounds, leading to the Thunder being down 3 1. Can they come back from being down 3 1? This was not supposed to happen. Game one was just happy, and now it's three. In game five, the Thunder finally decided that it was time to get back on track. Stephen Curry dropping 34 points and 12 assists alongside a KD double-double of 47 points and 11 rebounds. Led the Thunder to the victory, Series 3-2. In game six, the Thunder will hit on all cylinders, winning the game 126 to 110 after Stephen Curry will have an amazing stat line of 38 points, five rebounds, nine assists, two steals, and one block. KD playing the backup, having 30 points, 12 rebounds, two assists, and two blocks. And James Harden with 19 points, shooting 7 for 9. So he wasted no shots. They came all out for this game. 3-3. The entire season comes down to this shot right here. Game 7, one second on the clock, 107 to 107. You got to just hand that to Curry and just hope that he make it, right? Pull that. And he knocks it down. But did he get it off in time, though? Wait a minute. I feel like he didn't get it off in time. It took him a little minute to get that shot off. That was crazy. He ends up getting it off in time. Stephen Curry leads the Thunder to the finals. They made it past Kobe, bro. They just came back from a 3-1 lead. LeBron has no say in the GOAT debate now. The big three of KD, James Harden, and Stephen Curry win the conference finals, making it to the NBA finals. But they got a problem waiting for them. They got to go up against the Miami Heat big three, LeBron, Wade, Bosh. Game one will come down to the wire as both James Harden and Chris Bosh will go missing for their team. So it came down to who's better, the duo of Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant or the duo of Dwayne Wade and LeBron. And although KD and Curry put up a fight, the duo of LeBron and Wade was just too much. He ended up winning 122 to 119, taking game one of the series. Game two coming down to the clutch once again, 104-102. KD at the line right now, knocking it down. He ends up making free throw number two. Tie ball game 104 to 104. Oh my gosh. Easy lay. He misses it. Get back on defense, goddamn. Pass over to Harden. Back out to KD. What did he got in store? Going around the screen. You gotta pull that. Knockdown in there. Misses. 26 seconds on the clock. He up by two. All the Thunder can do is play defense right now. And we already know they're gonna waste out the clock. That's just expected. LeBron trying to go in on Jeff Green right now. Yo, he need help. He need help. Where was the help? How are the Thunder gonna shut down this deficit? Curry knocking out three off the rip. Misses. Serge Ibaka with the board back out to Curry. Oh, why didn't he shoot that? You trusted Jeff Green with the shot? Harden. They just wasted way too much time. All right. Heat take game two, 108 to 104. After going down two games against the Heat, the Thunder just weren't themselves in game three. Curry not showing up at all. They ended up losing, making them go down 3-0 in the series. Game four, however, was a different story. Curry, Harden, and KD all combining for 90, leading to a 122-113 victory over the Heat, making them now 3-1. They came back from a 3-1 lead in the Western Conference Finals. Maybe they could do it again. Who knows? Down 120 to 119 right now 27 seconds on the clock fouling immediately mario chalmers ends up making both free throws making them go down by three with 27 seconds on the clock kd with the ball step back oh my gosh that was a deep step back nah i'm very surprised he didn't make that Serge Ibaka going back up with the layup selling though wait a minute 122 to 121 maybe they just need to get a quick bucket 19 seconds now they gotta worry about Dwayne wade at the line and i feel like wade not missing so either way y'all gonna have to get y'all threes up curry it's your time wade ends up missing thunder down by two they got a big chance to win the game right now wait a minute who will they look to go to they go right back
back to KD, I don't know if that's the best decision, bro. I really don't. Like, you got Stephen Curry, the greatest shooter of all time, in the corner right now. What are we doing? KD versus LeBron matchup. The fate of the series is on the line, and KD launches. KD just launched. Curry and 1-3 for the win. This man, KD, sat down on the bench, bro, was too ashamed. Ain't no way. Curry 3, and they end up losing. The Miami Heat beat the Big 3 Thunder in the finals, just like in real life, except it's a year earlier. And we're right back to square one. It is now the 2011-2012 season, and the Warriors have decided to build around Westbrook, getting them some help in the form of center Andrew Bogut and a 21-year-old Klay Thompson straight out of Washington. The Thunder have also decided to make new additions in the form of vet Kendrick Perkins, who knows how to win a ring. And this addition would go a long way as they would end up finishing with the second greatest record in NBA history, 70-12. and 12. Curry officially averaging his first double-double, 28 points and 10 assists per game. He shot 45% from the three-point line, but he got knocked out of the All-NBA first team by Westbrook and D. Rose. Westbrook would average 26.7 assists and 8 assists in only his third year in the league, but his team still sucked though, so you know, he didn't make the playoffs. Curry and them boys did though, on the other hand, facing the Trailblazers in the first round of the playoffs. It was light work. The Trailblazers had no answer for KD, Curry, and Harden. Curry averaging the most out of the bunch, 32 points, 9 assists, and 3 steals per game, picking everybody pockets. They advanced to the next round to once again go up against Kobe and the Lakers. But unlike last time when the series went to a game seven, the Thunder came to play no games. KD taking a back seat this series, only averaging 25, saying only like that's a little bit. That man was still hooping. But Harden and Curry were just hooping a little bit harder as Harden would average 30 points this series and Curry would average an astonishing 37, pretty much snatching the torch from Kobe, leading them to the 4-1 series victory over the Lakers. Moving on to the two seed, Dallas Mavericks. The same Mavericks team that once upon a time eliminated them stood no chance as they were much older and this was a different Curry and KD. They made quick work of the Mavericks beating them 4-0 clean sweep. Once again meeting the Miami Heat big three in the finals and they'd eventually lose just like they did the year before 4-2. And then after they lost that series they trade James Harden to the Rockets so now it's just KD and Curry. Well on the bright side of things Russell Westbrook was finally able to lead the Golden State Warriors to the playoffs with a 49 and 33 record he would average 32.7 rebounds 10 assists 1.8 steals and 0.7 blocks per game absolute savagery making the all nba first team over curry who made the all nba second team and even though things look down after they lost Harden, they would still end up finishing first in the west going 59 and 23 meeting the dallas mavericks once again in the playoffs who i doubt that they'll have a problem with but the same cannot be said for westbrook and the warriors as they go up against the live city clippers Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. Westbrook's first playoff series looking like a cakewalk at first as they would go up 3-1 but then the Lob City Clippers really started to lock in. Chris Paul and Blake Griffin both averaging a double-double throughout the series led the Clippers all the way back up to a game 7 where they would get dropped off by Golden State after an amazing performance from Russell Westbrook in just 21 minutes because he would end up fouling out but in that time he would get 29 points off damn near perfect efficiency shooting 3 for 4 from 3, 6 for 7 from the free throw and 10 for 15 from the field along with that seven rebounds and eight assists leading his team to the w warriors move on facing the grit and grind grizzlies in the second round meanwhile over in the okc dallas series it was a clean sweep this series was all kd as he would average 30 points for the series curry would double doubles throughout the entire thing moving on to the next round where they will face andre iguodala and the denver nuggets the second round will be no different curry and okc hitting on all cylinders dominating the nuggets to win the series four one they will face memphis who beat the golden state warriors westbrook just couldn't lead his team past them as they would lose 4-1 as well but this was a good first playoff run they made it out the first round you can already tell once clay develop and draymond develop they're gonna be a problem in game one of the grid and grind grizzlies versus the thunder it did not look good for the thunder dante green with a random playoff performance of 27 points and seven rebounds bro never did that in the regular season but decided that this was the time to go off game two Two, on the other hand was a completely different story curry having a bad game only getting 14 points he got 14 assists with it though he said if i'm not gonna be able to get buckets i can hand them out kevin martin stepping up to the plate with 25 points shooting perfect from three this was the perfect time for him to step in kd really needed the backup as he would drop 28 points get seven boards and five assists in game three kevin martin will continue his own slot shooting 16 for 25 this man became the first option he made seven threes this game finishing with 
39 points. Who guessed that Kevin Martin at 40 piece was happening in the conference finals? I did not see this coming. Stephen Curry with 30 points and 19 assists. Thunder absolutely dominate the Grizzlies in game three, 138 to 109. Going up 2-1 in the series. Nobody on the Grizzlies able to find the answer. They would end up losing the series in game five. Thunder advanced to the finals not to go up against Miami because they would get knocked out of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Chicago Bulls, Derrick Rose, Joakim Noah, you know the team. Y'all want to see what we got to go up against? Derrick Rose is dropping 53 on people out here. Like, how is we going to compete with that? Curry, lock up. Game one coming down to the wire, 98-99. KD going around the screen. You already know he was going to pull that all day, but he misses. Crutch time is always the time where we mess up. Like, why is Curry guarding Lou all day? Thunder going to have to figure out a way to end off this game. Reggie Jackson forcing up layups makes it though. Playoffs always come down to crunch time and the work and the Thunder usually choke it. Derrick Rose trying to force up the lay. He misses. Perk setting the screen. Curry running around it going all the way to the Baja for the wide open layup. Joakim Noah not paying attention. 40 seconds on the clock. Luol Dang pull up. Three misses it. But Joakim Noah gets the board. You got to go back up with that bro. You are way too big. DJ Augustine with the lay. Clutch up. Wait a minute Curry. You got a lot of space on that one. I ain't gonna lie. You took that shot. You get it clamped up right now curry 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 pass pass kd wide open in the corner bang chicago trailing by two the thunder are very familiar with this position we ain't forget the dirt hit that game winner once upon a time we can't let derrick rose do the same wide open oh my gosh he doesn't take the shot pass down low to jimmy butler jimmy forces it ties up the ball game 106 106 1.1 seconds on the clock that's plenty of time to get a shot off hey y'all let a young jimmy butler knock that thing down this 2012 2013 this is his rookie season somebody get the basketball and make that shot out of everybody on the court we couldn't go to curry we couldn't go to kd we we did, all right i mean he has been having some crazy performances that conference finals was wild all right i understand overtime would end up being all okc is the bulls just seem to lose their energy they end up winning by 10 121 to 111 taking game one of the series game two however would be a completely different story is both kevin martin and stephen curry shooting efficiency just disappear curry would end up shooting three for ten from three fouling out as well compared to Lou all dang and Derrick Rose both combining for 68 tying up the series 1-1 in game three the shooting still wasn't there for Curry as he would finish shooting one for seven from three but he would help out in other ways getting eight assists and two steals Kevin Martin on the other hand would step up this game with 22 points so did Kendrick Perkins he would have 13 and KD leading the team to the dub with 31 led to an OKC victory 124 to 110 going up in the series 2-1 game four would be the same story for Curry sadly his shooting has just dis disappeared in the finals this man was not ready for the limelight Derrick Rose having a great game 35 points one steal one block seven assists Bulls take game four 118 to 109 tying up the series 2-2 in game five the Bulls would massacre the Thunder after Curry once again having a horrible shooting performance they would try to rely on KD once again but he would have a bad performance himself and when the star player has a bad performance you have nobody else to go to he'd finish shooting eight for 22 the Bulls take advantage of that Derrick Rose dropping 38 and Joakim Noah in full control of the glass getting 11 points and 21 rebounds leading to another Bulls W. Thunder now go down in the series 3-2. Bulls only need one more game. In game 6 Curry finally decided to step up dropping 29 points getting 7 rebounds and 7 assists but it was too late. The Bulls were already feeling themselves. Derrick Rose getting 33 points. DJ Augustin with 22. Luol Deng with 20. They smell blood in the water and end up winning the series 4-2 sadly another ill for curry and the thunder the 2013 2014 season seemed to be a huge turning point for everybody in this simulation stephen curry ended up winning mvp averaging 37 points yes 37 10 assists and 1.8 steals per game shooting 51 percent from the field and 43 percent from three this man has earned his first mvp in the year 2014 a year earlier than he did in real life as well as leading his team to the two c 
with a 62 and 20 record right behind them in the third seed is the golden state warriors though with a 61 and 21 record led by none other than a 25 year old russell westbrook who had an amazing season averaging 26.6 rebounds and nine assists per game so don't be surprised when you see him win an mvp next unlike last year golden state sweeps memphis to make it out of the first round russell westbrook with an amazing 40.11 rebound and five steal performance in game one add to that back to back 30 point performances from clay in game two and three and they sealed the deal after russ dropped 29 on them boys in game four winning the game 125 to 118 moving on to round two where they will face the portland trailblazers because sadly the thunder got beat 4-2 russ and clay refusing to end up like curry and kd both had 27 point performances in game one trying to lead their team to the victory but unfortunately the duo of damon lamarcus Aldridge was just too much warriors end up losing game one 115 to 119 going down in the series 1-0 the trailblazers will continue their onslaught after an abysmal shooting performance from westbrook he shot eight for 21 in game two and he's the first option so he pretty much sunk his team they ended up losing game two 114 to 108 going down 2-0 in the series after a 26.14 rebound performance from lamarcus aldridge in game three russ and clay both having terrible games russ only getting 14 points but he got 14 assists he knew he had to step back and let somebody else handle it in came jermaine o'neal with 19 points and 11 rebounds carrying the warriors to the w 110 to 105 winning game three going down 2-1 in game four the brody was in full beast mode he dropped 31 points had eight rebounds and eight assists not letting up on the blazers continuing their dominance from game three they ended up winning 111 to 105 taking game four and will continue their dominance taking games five and six as well moving on to the conference finals after beating the blazers 4-2 all right western conference finals lob city clippers go to state if curry ain't gonna be able to win a ring at least westbrook might in game one of the western conference finals the clippers blew out the warriors 126 to 105 after everybody on the team put on a show the warriors would not let that keep them down though however they would come back the next game with a vengeance winning it 121 to 85 westbrook with an amazing triple double 19 points 14 rebounds 14 assists shooting seven for 12 from the field add to that clay with his 30 point performance knocking down four threes carrying that energy in the game three the warriors were firing off on all cylinders westbrook dropping 40 jermaine o'neal dropping 20 and 10 andre guadala dropping 20 going up in the series 2-1 sadly though in game four the duo of chris paul and blake griffin took over cp3 dropping 44 points and blake finishing with 18 points 13 rebounds add to that deandre jordan 16 rebounds and the warriors didn't stand a chance in that game in game five both teams were looking to take the 3-2 lead chris paul dropping 29 points but he shot 12 for 26 and one for nine from the three he got absolutely shut down leading to a warriors w after playing amazing defense and even better offense westbrook dropping 21 points getting 14 assists game six however was a completely different story just like how the warriors shut down the clippers it was the opposite way around this time clay thompson couldn't do nothing he ended up finishing with only 11 westbrook had 23 the most points on the team and that's never a good sight chris paul finished with 37 5 and 6 somehow some way getting two blocks i don't know who let that happen blake griffin finishing with a triple double 28 10 and 10 and the usual deandre jordan double double lead the clippers to the victory 113 to 103 series tied 3-3 it all came down to game seven where none of westbrook's teammates showed up at all nobody showed up westbrook dropped 33 points with no help the warriors get eliminated in the conference finals we can't have no happy endings but in the 2014-2015 season we will continue to see the uprise of russell westbrook and the golden state warriors as he would end up winning mvp averaging 28 points six rebounds 10 assists and two steals also leading his team to the third seed with a 57 and 25 record one ahead of okc this time around you see how things are starting to change at first it was curry and okc going off now it's the warriors but steph is still no slouch though don't get it wrong as he would average 29 points this season and 8.9 assists 1.8 steals as well shooting 44 percent from the three-point line okc goes up against utah who i have no doubt that they will be able to sweep in the first round meanwhile we got golden state versus the spurs and a sweep did happen the golden state warriors sweep the spurs after westbrook and clay formed a duo to both average 25 plus a game moving on to the next 
round to face the two seed a James Harden led Houston team. Meanwhile, back in OKC, they get swept in the first round. My fault. Let me not do them like that. They didn't get swept. They got beat 4 1. But by the Utah Jazz, you might as well have gotten swept. Golden State would end up following right behind them, though, as they would get eliminated by James Harden and the Rockets 4 1, meaning another year of nobody that we care about winning the finals. That's very tragic. Wait a minute. Did Paul George just win a ring? Okay. The 2015 2016 season wasn't really that much different. Both players once again leading their team to the playoffs. Both players once again getting all NBA honors. Thunder get eliminated in the first round once again, this time by the hands of the San Antonio Spurs, who end up meeting the Golden State Warriors, the one seed, in the Western Conference Finals. And it was in that Western Conference Finals where the Spurs got smacked. Yes, the Warriors put them boys in a body bag. Russell Westbrook winning Western Conference Finals MVP. They make it to the finals, going up against LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Game one will be all Cleveland as LeBron will post a triple-double stat line at 37 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 assists. They keep applying that pressure, locking down Russell Westbrook. He'd only have 14 points in game two, shooting six for 20, zero for seven from the three-point line. Warriors now down 2-0. Y'all did not make it this far just to lose, bro. Stop that. Well, apparently they did because they ended up losing the next two games, meaning LeBron James brings the Cleveland Cavaliers a championship his first year back in this universe. Oh my goodness, bro. What is up with these dudes making it to the big one and just failing? Get off the court, Iggy. This pattern of failure may not last much longer, though. The Warriors end up acquiring Kevin Durant, leaving Curry all by himself with the help of Victor Oladipo and Andre Roberson. Now, although Steph got left stranded, he still ended up winning MVP. He's still leading his team going crazy. He averaged 22, 3, and 8. OKC still not making it out the second round, though. They get eliminated by the Spurs, making the Western Conference Finals a rematch between the Spurs and the 1C Warriors. But this time, the Warriors got KD, though. They end up dominating the Spurs once again, meeting the Cavaliers in the finals for the second year in a row. This time, KD on the roster, which led to a dominant Game 1 Warriors performance. Draymond having 16 points and 15 assists. Let's just take a second here. Draymond had 16 points. KD had 22 himself. Clay with 26, 7, and 2. And then Russell Westbrook leading the way to the Game 1 victory with 41 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 assists. This dominance, however, would not continue in the Game 2 as they would end up losing by 13, 115 to 102 after Kyrie had an amazing 31-point performance. Knocking down 7 threes alongside LeBron's double-double, 26 and 12. King James will continue his dominance going into Game 3 as he would drop 41 points on the Warriors to win the game 131 to 109. In Game 4, however, the Warriors looking to send a message, get back to their winning ways. Clay came back to perform. He had 36 points, shooting 8 for 11 from the 3-point line. Series tied 2-2. In Game 5, the Warriors would shut down LeBron and Kyrie, forcing 4 turnovers out of Kyrie and 3 out of LeBron. Not only dominating on the defensive end, but also on offense. Even though KD had a horrible game, shooting 8 for 20, still dropped 23 points. Westbrook with 15 and 13, helping the squad get the victory over the Cavs. Warriors lead 3-2. All they need is one more for Westbrook to get his first ring of this simulation. But you already know LeBron wasn't going to go out like that. He ended up dropping 45 in Game 6, helping lead his team to the victory, 141 to 125. We're going to a Game 7. It's looking like the Warriors are going to actually pull it out in their home court. LeBron forcing up the layup. Makes it. 45 seconds on the clock. They double in Westbrook. Clay wide open in the corner. That was the dagger right there. 96-103. LeBron, bro, you just wasted all the time. It's only 20 seconds left. Ain't no way they make a complete comeback in 20 seconds. And that's the ball game right there, folks. Russell Westbrook wins the first ring of this simulation alongside Kevin Durant, who was just with Curry for so many years, and they just couldn't get it done. He had to join the super team. Russell Westbrook finally wins the big one, ladies and gentlemen. But how long will this continue for? After that amazing playoff run from the Warriors, a lot of pieces were being moved around the league to make sure dominance like that wouldn't last for too much longer. Including OKC getting Curry more help to fill in for KD's absence. Paul George joining the team. Also Carmelo Anthony. This will lead to the Thunder finishing third with a 59-23 and record. Only two spots behind the Warriors who finished first with a 63-19 and record led by Russell Westbrook who once again wins the MVP award shooting going way up from that 28% a couple seasons ago. I don't know what that was. In a huge turn of events, the Golden State 
Stay Warriors looking like they were doing great in the first round, going up 3-0 against the Nuggets. When all of a sudden, Jokic turned into a triple-double machine, averaging 26 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. Led the Nuggets back with a reverse sweep on the Warriors. This is probably the biggest upset that we've seen yet. Meanwhile, OKC 4-1 Houston in the first round after Carmelo putting up an amazing 26-point performance in Game 5. They advanced to the second round where they will beat Portland 4-1 as well. But sadly, after the conference finals went up to a Game 7 between Minnesota Timberwolves and the OKC Thunder, the duo of Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins was still the OKC Thunder's casket after Wiggins dropped 32. And Cat had a double-double 14 points and 11 rebounds to win Game 7, 113 to 112. They beat them by one, bro. The following season, conflict started boiling within the Warriors, leading to the super team missing the playoffs entirely. Meanwhile, the duo of Paul George and Stephen Curry will lead the Thunder to the second seed in the West. Curry averaging 25 and 10 at 31 years old. But once again, they couldn't make it past Minnesota in the second round, getting eliminated 4-1. This will mark the end of Curry's 11-year run with the Thunder as that summer he will be traded to the Houston Rockets to join former teammate James Harden once again. And over on Russ's side, he would end up losing KD after that season, meaning no more super team, but would get two great pickups in Andrew Wiggins and D'Angelo Russell. Now with no KD, Russ will get way more touches, averaging 28 points this season, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, and 2 steals. Meanwhile, over in Houston, Curry and Harden still trying to figure out how to work together, barely make the playoffs in the 7th seed, where in the first round, they'll face the 2 seed his former team, the OKC Thunder. But the duo of Curry and Harden just wouldn't work out in the playoffs, as Curry would only average 19 points, James Harden taking all the shots, averaging 32, leading to them getting swept 4-0. Meanwhile, the Warriors had a Paul George and Kawhi led Clippers team who took them all the way to Game 7, where Wiggins would have an amazing 43-point, 11-rebound performance, backed up by D'Angelo Russell's 29 and Russ's 26, 8, and 9, which helped them gain the edge over the Clippers to win Game 7, moving on going up against the OKC Thunder. We still haven't seen a Curry versus Westbrook playoff matchup yet, and I'm mad about it. Somehow, the 6 seed Golden State would take the 2 seed OKC to 7 games, where Andrew Wiggins will once again come through with a 40-piece, this time dropping 48, leading his team to the victory 119-96, moving on to the Western Conference Finals, where they will face LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the Los Angeles Lakers. This will be a great back-and-forth series at first. LeBron and AD combining for 6 69 in game one to win in 114 to 98 in a blowout going up 1-0 in the series but then in game two D'Angelo Russell, Russell Westbrook and Andrew Wiggins came together dropping 23, 25 and 29 leaving with the dub 116 to 111 tie series but LeBron being LeBron he will come back in game three dropping 50 points shooting 20 for 25 he just dropped 50 on max efficiency. The next game a revive Clay Thompson will drop 34 making five threes along with D lows four to tie up the series once again 2-2. Leading us to game five where Wiggins will once again be the ultimate bucket getter dropping 30 points but he was the only one on his team getting buckets which will be their downfall after LeBron ended up dropping 42 points getting 13 rebounds, 9 assists and 3 steals followed along by AD's 32 points and 18 rebounds. Lakers take the W 119-100 to 100, going up 3-2 finishing the series off in game six where LeBron put on the absolute masterclass 30 points five rebounds, 10 assists, four steals, and two blocks. Lakers eliminate Golden State 4-2. Back to Curry and the Rockets. In the 2021 season, Curry would hear rumors that Harden wanted to get out of Houston, so he would get ahead via going to the GM's office and requesting a trade. Midway through the season, he would be sent to the Washington Wizards to join Bradley Bill. And they didn't do that bad. Now, once again, placed in the main option position, Curry would average 28 points and 11 assists. He'd lead the Wizards to the 8th seed. Meanwhile, back in Golden State, you could see Westbrook starting to slow down a bit. He'd average 24 this season, 6 rebounds and 9 assists. Still a great stat line, but not that triple-double Westbrook that we've seen before. This would show us Golden State would finish 10th in the West, meaning they had to go to the play-in where they would lose to Denver. Steph suffering the same fate, getting 4-1 by Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round. But you could see Steph getting back to his old ways, because in that series, he would average 27 and 11, meaning he still has something to offer. And the GM took great notice of that picking them up in the 2021 summer knowing that this could turn the Lakers into a serious championship contender the season would show that this was the right move the Lakers will finish 64 and 18 first seed in the West dominating the league way ahead of the second seed which was Denver with a 47 and 30 
five record. The same cannot be said for Russ and the Warriors, however. They will finish eighth in the West, meaning they have to go through the play-in once again. But this time, Russ carrying them through, dropping 40, leading his team to the playoffs to go up against the one seed, the LA Lakers. We finally got a Westbrook and Curry matchup in this video. Game one, the Lakers dominated, shutting down the Warriors offense, causing them to have 22 turnovers, shooting five for 18 from three, 28 for 68 from the field. Add to that the MVP AD dropping 40, LeBron having a 26 point triple double, and Curry having 14 points and 14 assists, along with five steals. Lakers go up 1-0. Game two was no different. The Warriors offense was just insufferable, shooting nine for 44 from the three point line. Like at that point, just stop shooting. Curry and AD both drop 19, along with AD's 22 rebounds, dominating the paint. LA going up 2-0. Game three coming down to the wire. Westbrook pull up, knock down to tie up the game. If the Warriors go down 3-0, I don't think that they have a chance of coming back in this series. LeBron, Gatorade, logo, don't stop them though. No Curry on the court, no AD on the court. The Warriors, this is y'all chance to take the lead. Wiggins lay in there. Both teams going back and forth. The Lakers subbed in Carmelo. He passes the ball over to LeBron. 2003 draft class going crazy right now. Carmelo was wide open. Reeves misses the shot. Westbrook going back down court. This is their chance to take the lead. Wiggins top of the key. Knocks it down. Going up by three. I'm expecting the Lakers to go to Reeves right here. They let him shoot the last shot. They go to LeBron. I mean, I guess. Best player on the squad. Forces up the shot and misses. Golden State takes game three. Series 2-1. In game four, the roles will reverse. Golden State dominantly putting away the Lakers. Westbrook with a 16 and 16 stat line along with five steals. Clay with the most points on the team, 25, knocking down five threes. Warriors tie up the series 2-2. That L set the Lakers on fire because in game five, they eviscerated Golden State. AD came back to play with 29 points and 13 rebounds. Add to that Curry's double-double, 24 points and 13 assists. Scratch that, throw in LeBron's triple-double, 22 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. Lakers go up 3-2. The dominance would not stop, however, even though Russ had an amazing 25 point game curry had an astonishing 30 along with 14 assists ad dropping 28 points controlling the glass with 15 rebounds and lebron's 22 9 9 lead the lakers past the warriors 4-2 we finally got to see the matchup and golden state got dominated the next round curry would deflate d book in the phoenix suns in games one and two after dropping back-to-back -back 40 point performances leading to a lakers sweep 4-0 and they've continued this onslaught into the western conference finals Finishing off the Mavs 4-1, Curry winning Western Conference Finals MVP, averaging 32 points, 11 assists, 1 steal. This may be Curry's chance to finally win the big one after all of those L's, and who does he go up against in the finals? The Miami Heat. But unlike before, LeBron was on Curry's team this time, along with the MVP AD, all three players having a double-double in Game 1. Game 2, however, has been very back and forth. Jimmy Butler down low over AD is crazy. I guess it goes in though 103 102 lakers down one with two minutes on the clock lebron trying to force it in on tyler hero oh no not trying to he does over both of y'all you already know curry do not want to lose another finals bro that'll look horrible if he just lost every time he went to the finals how does jimmy butler do it big ad turn around over bam this game's just been hook shot so far and i'm pretty sure that they not done jimmy going around the screen pick and roll to bam ran perfectly nobody there to stop him 107 106 curry i I need to see some greatness from you, my man. Kyle Lowry just gave you all that space. AD with the turnaround hook miss. He may regret that. Kyle Lowry on the fast break. You got to think that he passing it to Bam. No, he gets fouled. Going to the line. Curry with his fourth. Lowry ends up missing the second free throw, but he made the first one. Lakers on the fast break. You got to pass that, bro. God damn. Somebody... Curry takes the shot over Aladipo. Oh my goodness, that man is not human. Tie ball game, 35 seconds on the clock. Oh my gosh, though, Jimmy Butler out here throwing. Stevie's AD with the block. Anthony pushing it down the court. Get the ball out of this old man's hands. LeBron, yeah, that's the right old man to get the ball to. AD with the slip, dunks it in over Bam. Lakers up by two with 10 seconds on the clock. Heat going for the game winner right here. Jimmy B, what do you got? Oh no, it looks like they're going for overtime at this point. Wait a minute, Kyle Lowry. 
Misses the shot. Lakers go up in the series 2-0. Game three bringing us right back to that same predicament, though. Bam at the line right now. His team is down by one. He misses. Not clutch at all. Lakers with the ball. 25 seconds on the clock. Up by one. All they got to do is really hold it. They pass down low to AD. It almost gets picked. Wait a minute. Layup in there. Miami trailing by three. Victor Oladipo. Quick pull up to tie up the basketball game. 13 seconds. Here's my thing. Curry, this is your biggest chance at winning the championship in this video i feel like you should be the one taking this shot but it's lebron's team so i understand the gm driving to the basket on jimmy not working out for him though misses the shot and they go into overtime miami would end up coming out with the dub 123 to 118 finally getting up on the board in this series now they could tie it up if they lock down on this possession right here 114 to 117 four seconds on the clock lakers with the ball in hand no curry Bro, did they just go to JaVale McGee for the game-winning shot when Stephen Curry was right there in the corner? I didn't even see him at first, but why did they just do that? Series tied 2-2, but why? After back-to-back -back L's in Game 5, the Lakers were looking to dismantle the Heat. AD putting on an amazing 33-point, 20-board, 5-block performance, showing why he's the MVP. LeBron doing LeBron things, 25 points and 16 assists, add along Stephen Curry's 22-11, and 11, and the Lakers take Game 5, 133-112. to 112. Only needed one more victory the brights were too light for curry in game six as he would end up shooting zero for eight from the three-point line miami taking advantage of this opportunity taking the game 118 to 102 series is tied 3-3 steph bro you gotta win game seven or else all this was for nothing and win game seven he did after locking in on both ends with 34 points and four steals the big three of lebron curry and ad works out stephen curry is finally an nba champion now after that dominant playoff run, you'd expect the Lakers to go into the 2022-23 season blowing out everybody. But sadly, that just wasn't the case. The Lakers were underperforming, record 25 and 26, under 500, and by the trade deadline, all fingers were pointing at Curry. This would cause the GM to pack up Curry, sending him to the Utah Jazz, where he would get bought out, eventually joining Kawhi Leonard and his old friend PG. While it sounds good on paper, this trio was horrible. They finished 29 and 53, not making in the play in the playoffs the play over anything both paul george and curry were not the same players that they were on okc paul george skill noticeably decreasing he only averaged 17 points this year along with six rebounds and one assist curry averaging 22 and 8 which is still great but we just expect more from him the same could be said as well for westbrook who would average 20 points this season along with four rebounds and six assists but golden state has been building a great roster around him this whole time clay thompson still by his side Andrew Wiggins developing into an all-star. Draymond Green still a punisher on the roster. And young and Jordan Poole averaging 18 points, looking like the future of the squad. Even though he did get punched in the face in the offseason, you know, that did happen. But, I mean, you know, he's still going crazy. They finished fifth in the West, going up against the fourth seed Minnesota Timberwolves in the first round. And what will be an amazing series going all the way up to a game seven where eventually the duo of Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards will take it home for the Timberwolves. Both players get in the double double and russ is eliminated in the first round once again which brings us to the modern day nba 2023 2024 westbrook decides to take a step back on the warriors for his young fellas bringing them to the six man position in which he'd end up winning six man of the year averaging 12.6 rebounds five assists one steal and 0.5 blocks per game but while this situation worked out for him winning an award it did not work out for the team as they will finish 12th in the west with a 33 and 49 record meanwhile the clippers now have a curry from the beginning Beginning of the season to the end, also add in James Harden joining the squad mid-season. They will finish with a 59-23 record, earning the first seed in the West. A giant turnaround from last year, not even making the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. They face Memphis in the first round. Curry would average 30 throughout this series, making quick work of Memphis in the first round, beating them 4-1, moving on to the team that banished him, the LA Lakers. Obviously still feeling some type of way. Curry was not on his A game in game one. He was shooting 
shoot 9 for 22, but his teammates picking up the slack. James Harden with 18 points and 7 assists, along with Kawhi Leonard, 17 and 12, leads the Clippers past the Lakers in game 1, 112 to 103. Curry finally stepping up in game 2, dropping 26 points, along with James Harden's 21 and 11 behind Kawhi's 31. Clippers go up 2-0 in the series, 131 to 114. The Lakers would eventually fight back in this series, winning two games back to back, but after a phenomenal game 6 from Curry dropping 34, the Clippers close it out in 6. Moving on to the Western Conference Finals, where they'll face the 2 seed triple-double machine Joker in Denver. This series was nothing short of amazing. Multiple 40-point performances from Jamal Murray, Joker, Paul George. Eventually, they'd go to a Game 7 where James Harden would close it out for his team, dropping 22 points and getting 14 assists, helping win the game 115-105. to 105. And even though they lost the Conference Finals, Joker still won Western Conference Finals MVP. I don't know how it works, but Clippers make it to the Finals, going against the Knicks. Curry's already been here before, so he knows what it takes. Jalen Brunson is the new point guard on the block, though, looking to take that torch from Curry just like he did from Kobe. 105-107, to 107, Brunson looking to game it on the Clippers, runs around the screen, takes the mid-range shot and knocks it down on Curry's head, going into overtime. Knicks down three with seven seconds on the clock. This time, no Brunson. They pass it to the corner and he misses. Clippers escape game one only by two. Game two was no different though. However, once again, in the clutch players make clutch plays position. Curry with the fadeaway. You know Brunson going to match that. He drives down low, shoots the shot and knocks it down over P.J. Tucker's dome. Clippers call another timeout. That was their last one. 24 seconds left. Curry throws the turnover. No, you didn't, bro. Yo, JB knocked down free throw number one. And free throw number two goes in as well. Knicks up by three points. Clippers ain't got no choice but to knock one down. They also got the greatest shooter of all time on their team, though. So that should be like Paul George. Ain't no way you taking that shot over Curry. Don't do it. Don't, don't. Is he about to take a two? Why are the computers like this? Why are they like this? Why? The Knicks will tie up the series 1-1 and will continue to have their way going into game three even though the clippers did all they could to win the game curry having 35 Kawhi with 25 and pg with 21 james harden even had a double double 14 points 10 assists the knicks still came out on top led by jalen brunson's 44 points add on julius randall's 25 and og and anobi's 18 points four steals and three blocks knicks go ahead in the series 2-1 in game four curry would go completely missing only having 12 points and three assists in 34 minutes you could tell that this is the beginning of a new era. Jalen Brunson dropping 52 points on his head top. Wins the game for his team, 111 to 90. Knicks will go up 3-1 and continue their dominance in the game five, winning the series 4-1. Jalen Brunson snatching the torch from Curry, winning finals MVP, averaging 35, three and six. And Curry ends up just having that one ring to his name. But there it is, I swapped Stephen Curry and Russell Westbrook's career. Y'all let me know if this turned out how y'all expected it to and let me know know how do y'all think that it would turn out this was just 2k's version in my mind i seen james harden curry and kd winning a bunch of rings together that's just me though i'm out this thing till next time like comment subscribe peace